Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and we're making a Metroidvania in Unity. I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty sick of these boxes here. I think it's time we added some actual tile maps to give some life to this world. Let's get started. So first thing we're gonna need is some actual graphics. For this series, I'm using Pixel Fantasy Caves by Sazadi, which is available on itch.io for free. I'll leave a link in the description. Once you've got your tile set, you can literally just drag and drop it down into your assets folder. And here, if you open up Pixel Caves, you'll notice that there's a number of backgrounds. I know these don't exactly fall under tile mapping, but let's talk about how to use them anyways. These are designed to be layered one on top of each other. So I'm just gonna click on my scene view here and I'll also turn my gizmos on so we can see where our camera is. At this point, we can just click these different backgrounds and drop them into our scene. Now at this rate, our hierarchy is going to get really busy really fast. So let's just right click here and create an empty game object, which we'll call world. I like this notation of putting it in the square brackets. We can then click and drag all of our background objects on top of it. Before we go any further, let's just click on world though and make sure that we've zeroed out its position. And anytime we want to change the position of an object in the background, we'll move that object itself. Now at the moment, this is pretty hideous looking, so let's start by setting up the actual images themselves. I'm just gonna shift click so we can multi-edit them. We'll set them all to 16 pixels per unit, which is what we've been using in the rest of our project. And if you zoom in, you'll notice that things are a little blurry. So let's make sure that we change it to filter mode point no filter. And then just to keep our color fidelity, we'll also make sure our format is set to 32 bit. At this point, if we zoom in, you can see that the pixels in our background are the exact same size as our player, so we're nice and consistent. Looks great. At the moment, however, Unity doesn't know which of these images to render on top, so depending on where I go and what I click, it's moving different objects to the top, so let's give these a layer. I'm going to click on my first background and actually set it just to layer negative 100. Gives us lots of space to work with, and then I'm just going to change the name to match that. I'll then make each of the other background layers about 10 apart from each other. That just gives us room if later on we want to add more details in between. There's lots of space to do that. Finally, I'm just going to take these background four and make sure that we move them so that they actually match up with the top and bottom of our view. If we click on game view, that's already starting to look pretty good. Now let's go back to our hierarchy and do some more organization. First of all, I'm just going to add another empty object here, which we'll call background and make sure that it's zeroed out. We can then grab each of our backgrounds and put them there. This will just help us keep our world nicely organized and we can now add a new empty on our world. And we're gonna call this one ground and this is gonna be where we put our tiles that we can actually walk on. Here we can right click, go to 2D tile map and we're gonna select rectangular. Now for my project, as soon as I created this, the tile palette actually showed up here beside my inspector. If it's not there for you, there's a good chance it's probably showing up in your scene view down in the bottom right and you can click to open the tile palette from there. At this point, we can actually create our palette. You'll notice there's a little tiny space here. I'm just gonna drag to make more room where we can click and drag any tiles we wanna add to our scene. Our tiles are found in the main lev build. Let's just make sure to set that one up. So again, 16 pixels per unit, point no filter and 32 bit format. We can apply that and open up our sprite editor. Now, first off, I'm just gonna show you what not to do. You'll notice it's already pre-sliced here automatically. Now I could just drag the tiles in there as is. I'll make sure to make a new folder here called tiles as this is gonna generate hundreds of individual files here, one for each tile, and we don't want those messing up our sprite folder. You'll notice, however, here's our problem. Because of the way they were auto sliced, we've now got tiles that are weird sizes and don't fit the boxes. And when I try to put them together, it's just totally a mess. So I'm just gonna delete that folder, use my eraser to clean up those artifacts here. And now let's slice this thing the proper way. So instead of automatic, we're gonna do it by cell size. And we're gonna use 16 by 16 as that's what we're using throughout this project. We can then slice that up, hit apply. Now we can drag those tiles onto our palette. Once again, we'll make a new folder for those tiles. And now things are looking much better. Each tile is actually the correct size. At this point, you can actually just click on any tile you want and you can start painting on your map. You can paint single tiles or groups of tiles if you click and drag. But one of the, my favorite tools is actually this one here where we can select a range of tiles and then we can click and drag and we'll repeat the pattern of that tile for that entire space. This is super handy when you're building levels. At this point, we can just grab some other ones. I'm gonna make some edges on these tiles as I just think that'll look a little nicer. 
I'll also make a little gap here for my player to actually have something to jump over. And at this point, I'm going to get rid of the old ground object as we don't need it anymore. I'm also going to take my grid here and just drag it into our world so that we know that it actually belongs as part of the ground. While I'm here, I want to make sure that my ground tile map is actually set to be part of the ground layer. That way the player knows when he's on it. That said, if I play right now, he's still going to fall right through it. That's because our tile map doesn't actually have a collider. Here we can add a component called a tile map collider 2D, and you'll notice that it automatically maps to the shape of our tiles, which is pretty handy. And this will actually work really nicely, except that you'll notice here that we've got some squares on every spot. Now, especially if you're using a box collider or anything with sharp edges, occasionally you'll find as you move that you get caught on it, and that's not something we want. So to fix that, we're going to add a composite collider. Now, if we go to our tile map collider, we can see that there is a composite operation option, and we can just merge all of those tiles, making them each into one big collider, which will keep us from getting caught and make things just smoother all around. However, if I press play now, the sky is falling, or at least the ground is. And that's because when you add a composite collider, it also puts a rigid body 2D in to detect collisions. All we want to do is make sure that that rigid body is set as static, and that way it'll never move. Much better. Now let's say you're editing and you decide you'd like to move an object. You don't actually have to erase and redraw it. Instead, you can use the select tool to select it, and then use the move tool here in order to just drag it into a different location. Now one more thing I'd like to cover while we're here is just adding a background tile map. So here I'm going to actually just click on my background and we'll create a 2D tile map rectangular. You'll notice it created its own grid which is what we want as we're going to put this one in with our backgrounds instead of our grounds. I'll rename the actual tile map itself to background and I'm going to set this one at about minus 10 so that it renders in front of all our other backgrounds but still behind the ground itself and I'll just make sure that the name reflects that. I'm just going to use some of these brown cave tiles for that as they've got some really cool shapes that can add some neat dynamics to your background. Now that makes for a much more dynamic looking world. There's no collider so we can still walk right through them and they just act like they're in the background. That said, it would sure be nice if we could get things moving a bit, and I just plain would like to make a bigger world to explore. That's where we'll head in the next video when we'll take a look at how to use the Cinemachine camera in order to follow our player, and we'll also look at some other cool things the camera can do. Hope to see you in that video. Until then though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.